Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today we're going to be talking about the cast strength version of one of my favorite Isla whiskeys. Actually, is that true? I kind of like a lot of Isla whiskeys. Oh, sorry about that. Um, let's get into the Boonabin 12 cast strength. That sounds much better than whatever that was. I'm curious how many of you actually remember much about Boonab. And now I did a video on them a while back talking about the regular 12. So let's see how good your memory is. What does the name Boonabin actually mean? Wow, I'm impressed. It means mouth of the river. You totally nailed that. Wow, very good. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you actually knew that. But uh, if you are interested in learning more about the distillery, go watch that video and you'll learn why there's a captain on the bottle and why a single road through Isla made a world of difference for Boonabin. Otherwise, let's talk about this bottle. This is bottled at 55.1%, it's sherried, it's non-peated, it's non-chill filtered, and there's no color added. So this kind of puts it in line with things like maybe the Brook Lottie Classic Lottie, except maybe a cast strength. But some of my favorite whiskeys from Isla are heavily peated, and some of my other favorites are not peated whatsoever. So the fact that this is non-peated is interesting and something that I enjoy. So let's go ahead. I'm probably gonna have a little bit of bias because I really like the regular 12 year old so much, but we'll see where this ends up. I have two different glasses in front of me. This one has water in it and this one does not. Since it's cast strength, I wanted to add a little water and see if there's any differentiation. So I've got my little coins covering these guys up, keeping all them vapors in. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give this a nose. Initial nose on this is that it's a little bit malty. Um, some of those sherry notes are coming through for sure. I'm getting like kind of red berries going on. A little bit of raspberry. A little definitely heavier on the strawberry here. It's actually very, very nice. It's very much red wine influenced. That is mostly what's coming across here. But let's see if we can dig a little deeper and get anything else. Maybe a little bit of toffee from the um, from the the wood there. But that's 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 minor. It could just be wood plus sweet. So we'll see. little cinnamon actually I'm gonna go like a little bit cinnamon here um there's there's a this isn't one of those where everything melds together into a single smell this is a good one to pick apart and so when I'm smelling this I'm getting most of those different things but that heavy sherry is taking over most of the nose all right let's go ahead and have a taste here cheers mmm Now I have not drank most of this. It's down to about here. I did my initial review of this as kind of just a quick live stream. I think I drank the Warehouse one from Lefroig uh, and this one. Now I drank this one first because obvious. Um, and when I first poured this off the nose, I wasn't like crazy about it. It didn't really, didn't really speak to me as being like, oh, this is something like major. It doesn't smell heavy on the alcohol. And I know I just drank it. I'll go back to that in a sec. But the nose here is something I forgot to mention is it's not heavy alcohol, even at 55%. Point one. Who does that? <laughs> so 55.1%, no heavy alcohol. But on the taste here, also, you're not getting heavy alcohol. However, during that first taste, I do feel like I remember it being a little heavier on the alcohol. So the fact that this has sat around for about a month to two months or so might have done it some good. All right, let's go ahead and have another taste of this because I forgot what it tastes like. That's totally the reason I'm having a second sip. Okay, so chocolate notes are actually kind of at the forefront here, which is surprising. That's uh, not what I was expecting. I kind of, I wish I would have looked at my notes. You know what, I'm gonna do this. I, I don't know what it says, but I'm gonna put my notes from the original Boonab and 12 up on the screen somewhere, and I'm gonna see if I can compare that to what I'm getting here. So this is kind of like a blind that's that's a little fun actually. Let's see let's see if I have any clue what I'm talking about. Um, so chocolate is super heavy, especially in the finish. It's it's almost all I'm tasting right now. But mix that with a little bit of maltiness as well uh, to give it just that little bit of extra depth. The sherry is not coming across much, unless well let's see. Hmm. No, I wouldn't say the sherry is as heavy of an influence as you would expect it being X sherry finish. It doesn't taste at all like red wine. It tastes like chocolate, malty, maybe a little nutty, 
Um, a little hint of cloves kind of on the finish there. Uh, there's some sea salt going on, but that's hard to find. That's deep um, and very, very subtle. There is also something else. Hmm. It could be that it's fall, but I feel like I'm tasting some nutmeg in here. But I could also be a little crazy. I That might be just an influence. Thinking about the cinnamon from earlier, I might just have that on my mind. But I'm tasting it, so I'll go with it. Um, I suspect that this tastes nothing like the original 12, as far as the comparisons of my notes there. I think the higher ABV is overwhelming any of those really heavy sherry notes that you might be getting. So, let's put that to the test, actually. Um, I'm going to try the, the one over here that has been uh, brought down a little bit in ABV. So, the smell here... Is pretty similar. Um, I wouldn't say there's a whole lot of difference, but that makes sense because the ABV wasn't very heavy on the nose anyway. But let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Mm. That does make a bit of a difference. It actually, oddly enough, I taste the alcohol a little bit more in this one, but that could be just the way that water reacts with, with alcohol. It makes everything kind of rise to the top. You get those oils at the top, but it's also been sitting there for a little while, so who knows? Either way, it does taste different. It's got a little bit more of a bite to it. And I think that's interesting. I would have expected it to be the other way around. Let me have some water real quick. And then let's try it again. Yeah, no, same, same result. Still not picking up the sherry very much. I am surprised at that. I, I'm very curious to know what I said about my original Boonab and 12. But anyway, as far as flavor goes, let's go overall. This tastes really good. <laughs> and considering the price I paid for it for, I think I paid about $90. This is, to me, it's worth it to buy. Um, and then if you were to consider the fact that it's a limited edition and maybe if you find it, uh, it could be worth picking up because then you can compare this year's to next year's to next to next, uh, which is something I will probably try to do. So as far as I'm concerned, I would buy this probably for up to about 110, knowing it's a limited edition of a whiskey I like at cast strength. I think 110 is the max I would go though. And even that I wouldn't be like psyched about. I love it at 90. I love it at 80, <laughs> but I love it at 90. Um, I think this is wonderful. I think this is a great expression and a great variation of something I already love. So I would highly suggest that you buy this one. And it definitely gets my rating of buy it. So anyway, that does it for this episode of the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you all have a great rest of your night and cheers. I'm going to drink these. <laughs> all right. Yes. I mean, I'm going to taste these. I'm going to taste these some more and take some, some further notes. To notes. <laughs>